So we are here to look at Brian. A very popular character that a lot of people know nothing about, myself included. I haven't done a deep dive for Brian's move list ever since DR, so he's gotten a lot of shit throughout the games that I just don't know much about. So a lot of this stuff is going to be new to me. And some of it may be new to you, some of it may not be. But we will all learn together, and if you think I'm wrong, feel free to tell me so in the chat, and I will correct myself. That's fine. It's okay to be wrong. I'm okay with admitting my mistakes. So, as far as what I do know about Brian, uh, I do know that his presser is a little weird, right? Because his poking is a little weird. He doesn't have your standard down forward one poke, right? The closest thing he got is shit like this. And really, he doesn't use down forward two by itself, really. It's more like mixing up this with uh, that, right? Shit like that. Um, his equivalent in DR and 5.0, his equivalent to a down forward one poke, kind of, was his 3 plus 4 back then. Which was like a keep out, super fast recovery, long range knockback. Now, it's like a complete, ever since second six, changes to a completely different move. Uh, you can kind of use down two as a poke, too. It's not bad. It's negative two on block. Only plus one on hit. And then he has the third of that second hit. So, he's got some weird poking stuff going on. Another thing about Brian, though, is um, there's really not much plus on block with Brian. Not a lot of it. So, there's a whole lot of, like, you kind of got to move around during his poke pressure. You have to move around a lot. Like, back one is about as good as it gets, I think. I mean, I know there's some other stuff, but back, as far as plus on block, you know, slash kick, back one, dab, and then it's just, you know, it's not much else. So, yeah. He's kind of always at a little bit negative if you're using him right. But uh, he's never, he nah, not never, he's rarely heavy negative. If he is... He's doing shit like that that's pushing you back really far, even though he's negative 13. So, more often than not, you could play pretty damn safe with Brian, but... Um, you can't play that super safe, like, Kazumi-style pokey game as well. Down back three is good, though. It's always been good. And you kind of have to do a lot of moving around with Brian. I've heard that his tracking was bad in past games. I don't know how it is in this game. We'll find out, I guess. But, uh, I don't think that's that big a problem. And, of course, he has Orbital Heal. Everybody knows about fucking Orbital Heal. Super fast recovery. You can do neutral jump Orbital. Still get a jump. Oh, and he has really good whiff punishment, too. And he has one of the uh, faster launches from standing with the Jet, uh, jet Upper. Formerly a 13-frame launcher in, t in DR. Now it's a 14-frame launcher. But it is a forward back input, so punishing, block punishing 14 frames is awkward if you're not used to it, using a forward back input. You follow? And of course he has Tom. Am I going to go through his BNB combos? Um, if Milo, if Milo tells me to, I tend to not really go too crazy for juggles. Sometimes I'll look into them, but the thing about that is, like, there are a lot of people that make juggle compilation videos on YouTube, so they're not really hard things to find. I mean, sure, I'll ask around if there's a Brian player like Milo in the chat who could tell you. But, like, I just know the old shit. Like, I don't know. What, if, what do you do after that? I don't know. You go right into this instead? Whoop. That doesn't even work. I don't really know what his BNBs are in this game. But, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at them and I'll try them a few times. But that's not really what's important as far as what I go through. I go through the stuff like the moves themselves, you know? Starting from the top, the jab. And uh, like everybody else, 10 frame startup, plus one on block, plus eight on hit. Nothing fancy. And then he has a one, two, plus five on hit, only 15 damage. Minus two on block instead of minus one, which is not that big a deal. Uh, pretty standard shit. Now here's the thing about Brian. Any single fucking, every single schmohawk that has fought against this character, picked this character, knows that he has these jab follow-ups, right? Right? These are better than you may think. These are essentially, in my opinion, as far as uh, strings that are attached to jabs, outside of Mashima Flash Punch combo, the best jab strings in the game. Bar none, in my opinion. There are no better jab strings than these. 
So, he has one, two, four, high, high, high. One, two, uh, one, two, one, high, high, mid. One, two, three, high, high, low. One, two, one can be delayed very heavily and is safe on block. One, two, four cannot be delayed, but it is also safe on block. One, two, three also cannot be delayed, but it's not safe on block, negative 12. I'm assuming if you get hit by the jabs, you cannot low parry it. Whoops. Right. Oh, I was I assumed wrong, apparently. You could totally still uh, low parry it. That's a rare uh, instance of that. Usually, with strings into lows, if you get hit by the early part, you cannot low parry the low. That's not the case for Brian. The important key thing to note here is he could heavily delay the mid. And the mid is the one you want to watch out for because the mid on counter hit, everybody knows this, is a juggle starter. Not only that, 1 2 1 and 1 2 4 are counter hit strings. 10 frame counter hit strings. 1 2 1 being plus 6 kind of knocks you off axis a bit to his right. Um, and 1 2 4 is a knockback. Both really good damage. So, 34 damage from 1, 2, 1. And I don't know about 1, 2, 3. Counter hit? Is that a counter hit? Oh, that's 1, 2, 3 is also a counter hit string. Go figure. So, the thing that makes the 1, 2, 3 viable is the fact that you can delay the 1, 2, 1 to time it similarly. Even though there's a gap between the 1, 2 and the 3, you can put that gap and delay the mid. So... It's really good because, not just be, not really because, like, a lot of newer players are going to think, oh, that means mix-up 1-2-1 one, one, and 1-2-3 one, as a mid versus low mix-up. Sure, but that's like baby's first mix-up. The important thing to know here is it makes 1-2 by itself a lot better because nothing will make your opponent want to hesitate swinging, af uh, swinging at you after blocking 1-2 more than getting hit by one of these delayed 1-2-1s. One, that's going to put a stop to people wanting to swing at Brian real quick. So that's going to augment you just doing other stuff out of your 1-2s on block. You can always do a 1-2 on block into like a down 4, 1-2, down back 3, 1-2, side step, 1-2, side step, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, you know? You can do a lot of things with that. It's not just about the built-in options. It's about the fact that 1-2 by itself is only negative 2. So you can do a lot of things with this. A lot. Also, 1-2s tend to be harder to side step. Let me see. Let me do a little test run here for you guys. So if I do a jab into one two, let me hold forward on that actually. Jab forward one two. Okay. Okay, not as much as other characters. Wow. Holding forward one two makes it track makes his jab catch me in that direction, but not that direction. Maybe I'm delaying it and not realizing it. Wow, Brian's jabs is kind of tracked to his right? That's odd. Thought so. Okay. So the thing about 1-2s is, is depending on how people step, if I step left, I have to respect the 2 unless I walk. So that's going to stop me from doing... Oh, not even then. Oh, even then. Even then, the second hit is still catching me. So, that's going to stop me from, like, sidestep into... See? I can't sidestep into even a jet upper. See? I can't... At least reactionary. I could try to jab. That's me doing jab out of sidestep. Barely beating it out with the fastest option that I have. That's the good thing about one twos, As opposed to him just doing a one by itself. He just does a one by itself. I can do whatever the fuck I want to him. So that's kind of a semi-universal thing about 1-2s. Some are better at doing this than others. Some 1-2s just like never track, no matter which way you fucking go. While other ones, they'll clip you to one side. If you try to do a sidestep poke pressure, especially like a Kazumi player, for example, you might catch them uh, uh, you know, towards the end of your, of your uh, jab strings. So the thing about that that I want to test here is, if he connects the two by itself, is there any natural combo here? No. But counter hit, how about that? Of course, no! Wow, I didn't know that. Okay, there he got it. Maybe I delayed it without realizing. 
Wow, he hasn't got the four, but he gets the one. Okay. That's weird. You think he would still get the four, right? Not even the low. Okay, so he still gets the one, two, one. So if you want to clip people sidestepping in that way, go with the one, two, one. Because at least it'll combo, and if they block it, he'll still be safe. So this is another thing worth noting about that. Any questions so far? What's going on, McGwiffin? Are these NC or Jail? No. No Jail. They are NCC. Natural counter hit combo. What's going on, Chad? Any questions so far? No, no. Yeah. What to one does with no delay? Oh, really? Okay. Good, good, good call on that one. Let me see. Without any delay. No. I, do I didn't feel like I delayed it there. See, I'm mashing it, so I don't think I'm delaying it. Nope, that's not a jail. Jail would force me to block it. I would not be able to swing. So even if he doesn't delay the one to one that's still a counter hit setup, which is scary, because that's not usually the case with, with strings like this. Usually, to give, to give it counter hit properties like that, you'd want to delay the last hit. Otherwise, they'd be forced to block. So it's even better than I thought. Yeah, no. Uh, you yeah, gotta understand, jail is usually only used for, like, high highs that you cannot duck. Like a 1-2. You cannot duck a 1-2, right? Obviously, right? If I, block the, if I block the 1, I cannot duck the 2. That's usually what jail means, but technically, there's other uh, meanings for jail, where it's like a high into a mid, for example, that allows you, that doesn't allow you to do anything when you block the high. Nothing at all. <laughs> So, even though it's like a hide to a mid, it's jailing you, essentially, that you have to block the, the, the string. Because there's not enough of a gap, basically. You're still in blocks, then. Think about it that way. Like a true block... Uh, I can't even talk. A true block string from a 2D fighter. Think about it that way. That's an easy way to think about it. Let me get a swig of water over here. I'm already getting parched. I, did a, I took a long walk home from Port Authority to the Lower East Side of Manhattan, so I'm pretty uh, sweaty. By the way, guys, as always, even if you have non-Brian related questions, feel free to ask them. If I know, as always, I will answer. So, yeah. Up front, we already got some really good moves with Brian. Let me see something. One, two, one. If I don't delay it, can I step it at all? Probably not, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. All right. So, if he does delay it. Okay. Okay. As you would think, step away from the move. Now, here's my question. Can I... Can I initiate a step and block? Doesn't look like I can. Nope. Can't even do that. The moment you try to initiate a step, that mid is gonna hit you. That's how good this shit is. And it's safe on block. That Shaheen has something sort of similar going on. But his mid option that does the juggle starter on counter hit is unsafe. And if it connects on normal hit, it all combos on counter hit, like just like this. But it's only uh, negative one on hit. <laughs> it does push out though. So Shaheen basically has a way worse version. It's still good, but a worse version of this. So this is like one of the, in my opinion, one of the reasons to pick Brian. Because essentially you could start pressure with like really fast jabs. And if people want to stop that kind of shit, they have to step a very specific direction or they have to just like hard read and duck right in your face. Duck under the one, two and try to beat out the one with like a while standing, you know, whatever, right? Excuse me. Uh, at least my fuck ups let you double check your work. <laughs> I try to double check my work anyway, although I still miss stuff every once in a while. Hell, like Kuma, I missed the down forward, what was it one, two, one, two counter hit? It took somebody PMing me in Twitch to let me know that that's a counter hit combo. So yeah, that's all good shit. So 1-2 is a 10 frame punisher, sure, but the better one is actually 1-4. That's the 10 frame punisher you're going to want to use. 1-2 is on plus 5, 1-4 is plus 4, but it's way more damage as you can see. 21 damage instead of 15 damage, 6 more damage. Also 1-4 pushes back a little bit, I think. 2-3 uh, is also a uh, 10 frame punisher. Uh, for even, is it more damage? No, for even more damage, but it pushes out. So this is kind of like your keep out option if you want to keep maintain this sort of spacing, which is all, which is really good for people that swing. Because, like, sure, if people are swinging at you like this, 
You could frame trap them with like a magic four, which is not an easy thing to convert off of to get full damage with Brian. But um, this is better because then you set up a backdash jet upper with punish is going to net you, you know, even more damage and be easier to convert off of. So why not go with the easier option? And it gives you more damage up front. So if you're fighting a master, I recommend that. And then just maybe not even backdashing, just holding back. And then if they whiff something, bam, get that locked and loaded right there, you know. Or, you know, if you're so inclined to forward four, uh, forward four one also. Uh, it's a little slower, though. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, two, one four and two three are other 10 frame punish options. I know about that. So, anyway, there's a lot attached to these, uh, specifically to one four also. So, we're not done with one four just yet. Uh... So recap, one, two, four is uh, only negative three. Counter hit combo. Yahoo! 40 damage, wall splat, very high damage. One, two, one, counter hit combo. 34 damage, one is delayable, it's always safe. And then one, two, three, no delay here. All combos on counter hit. And then uh, for plus two, and then if the low counter hits, which I forgot to mention, uh, it knocks down for a free core circle back four. Is that what you get? What you get there? Yeah, you have to do it pretty fast, but you get a free core circle back four, which is an awkward thing to get used to if you're not, which I'm not used to it. It's actually new to this game. I don't think uh, core circle back four. It, I think it did connect on grounded, but it did do the backflip. That's a new mechanic to Tekken Seven, but it adds 16 damage. So the one, two, three. It's only negative 12, and whether you hit with the jabs or not it, on normal hit, it can be low parried. It can be low parried every time. So if you're going against Brian and you want to get slow, my suggestion is to low parry instead of low block. You'll get way more reward no matter which character you're playing as outside of, I guess, uh, the meter characters with meter. They'll be able to crouch jab into super or Akuma crouch jab into whatever the fuck he does, right? <clears throat> I know Eliza... Gets crouch jab into super, which is a jungle starter. Geese gets crouch jab to quarter circle back one into super. Or even then, just crouch jab to quarter circle back one is way above average. So shit like that, right? <clears throat> Sloppy. Now, can you sidestep the low, I wonder? So the low cannot be delayed, and it always comes out with a gap. That makes me wonder if you could sidestep it. No, but here's what I will say if a Brian is trying you're fighting against Brian and they're trying to mix this up with the mid They're gonna have to delay the mid probably because the mid is comes out faster, right? Less of a gap on the mid So if they do delay the mid, is this the delayed? No, that's no delay. Okay, so if they do delay the mid like that, ooh, cameraman Then you open up an OS, defensive OS. Oh man, faster. There it is. Oh, fat. Yeah, see? Take some practice. That's useful no, no matter what. You, that's a useful thing to learn no matter who you're fighting against. Most characters have some have some sort of setup, some sort of situation where knowing that kind of a defensive OS will help you a lot. But this is just one example. <clears throat> so the low tracks the other way? How about the other way? Okay. It tracks both ways. So go left. You're left. And then the high tracks no matter what, I know that. I didn't say used to, let me make sure. You can't even start to sidestep. Just like the mid without the delay. If you start to sidestep, you're going to get hit by it. So you can't do that OS to get around this. Yeah, you can't do a sidestep until low parry on that. But of course, you got that, right? And so, and so whatever the fuck the combo is. That's a 43 damage. What? Wait, what? I didn't know that. Oh my god, I didn't know that was 43 damage. That's crazy. Jesus Christ. 43 damage double starter. Yikes. Uh, Davidisms, S and Ken characters with reversals, attempt to parry, 
the third hit of his one two strings if they block the first two hits um you know what that's a good question in regards to the one to one without a delay let me see if brian can do it because uh counters have startups mm. it's back wait no that's not how you do his uh parry okay okay if he doesn't delay the one to one the bad news is you don't have enough frames see at least with brian i'll test with a few characters with Brian, you don't have enough frames. If he does put the delay, though, you probably do, right? Okay. Reversals tend to take, uh, like, three or so frames outside of very specific situations. For example, Ling Zhaoyu and Master Raven, when they're back turn, their reversals and their parries uh, activate on frame one because they have to. That's just the nature of them, them, them being back turn. They have to, otherwise they wouldn't be good. Um... But like your standard face-to-face -face counter reversal stuff, it'll uh, it needs a couple of frames to activate, and I think it's always or usually three frames. I'll try a couple of other ones just to be sure here. Geese tends to break some rules with his, so I'll try geese. Fisherman slam is half life. Hmm? Because we do know, we did confirm that 1 2 1 without the delay does have a gap in it. It's just not a big enough one to really do much. Right? So, what is it? This? Right? Okay. So, the good news, though, even though this, this is whatever for counters, the good news is you're not going to get counter hit trying, right? So, that's good. That's your Feng trying to 1 plus 2. Maybe that'll get counter hit. Let's try Fengs. Cause I don't I don't remember which uh, frame his one plus two parry activates on. Thank you for asking that, by the way. I wouldn't have thought to test this. Call me Krim. Yoshi can flash it for sure. Hmm, you sure about that? I guess we'll find out. Which is the faster flash? Sword out flash is faster, right? Nope. Yep, that's one plus two. Okay, Fangs is actually pretty slow. I did not realize that. Or maybe I just don't remember. Uh, what's the other one? Shifting Clouds, right? Okay. I mean, it's only one hit, so Shifting Clouds won't help you much here. Unless he's mashing. Yeah, so Shifting Clouds is like, you pointless. It's just going to parry one and do nothing. So, uh, yeah, the sword out flash is the slower one, I think. Faster one, sorry. I think. But less range, right? So, uh, sword put away flash is slower, but more range. I think that's how Yoshimitsu's flash works. That's how it used to work, at least. Can you backswing blow it? Hell no. You don't got enough frames. I'll try, though. Uh, what's flash input? Uh, uh. Yeah, see? Not enough frames. I don't even think he could do it to the delay. Let's see. Maybe that one he can. Max delay. Yeah, see? Max delay he can. But the problem with that is, unlike a counter, you're answering with an attack. So if he doesn't delay 1-2-1, one, one, you're going to eat a counter hit. 
So this is essentially a hard read on if he's going to delay it or not. Does it beat out the other options, though? Probably not 1, 2, 4. 1, 2, 3, maybe. 1, 2, 4, I don't think so. Oh. Maybe we're wrong. But the good news is... The good news is... If he does any option other than the uh, than non-delayed one to one, your flash will beat it. So that's a good thing. It's still a hard read, and the non-delayed one to one will eat you alive. So it's a good little anti-Yoshi thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's <laughs> Uh Sway moves tend to not be able to escape small gaps like that, but I'll test just because you asked. I'll go back to Fang and Josie. Since you asked. Like, uh, you mean, uh, not sway moves, but like backswing blow moves. Not sway, sorry. Backswing blow moves tend to need a little bit, you know, of a gap. Also, I suspect that if you were to delay the one to one, then he'd counter hit the backswing blow. Just a hunch. Big enough for gap. Okay. That's just a punish, so it's a regular knockback. Now there's one more thing I'm gonna test before moving on. This time I have to pick Brian. Where is she? Where is she? Oh. As good time as any to go through the rules of punishing Link, I use uh, California Roan to the root kick, right? My dog was barking a minute ago. I'm wondering what happened out there. So, for those of you who don't know, Ling Zhao used California Roan to the Rue Kick Launcher is negative 11 on block. She is stuck back turn. Oop. So I'm going to mash out the uh, punch parry after block, after input. Oh my god. Awkward. Right? So what ends up happening now, if I do a punch attack that is slower. Uh, then 11 frames she will parry it and get a juggle that's an elbow fuck that's an elbow apparently <laughs> damn brian got so many elbows apparently down two and down forward two are both elbow attacks good for uh anti generic reverses but as you can see oh that's an elbow idiot if it, as long as it's a punch she will parry the shit out of it and kill you. She also has a back turn uh, pay, uh, counter, parry counter, whatever, manual parry they call it. So a uh, counter kicks now. That's new to this version of Ling Xiaoyu. Before, if you had like a 15 frame hop kick, you'd be able to punish uh, this with it. So anyway, because of that, we know that she will be back turned. As long as it's 11 frames or faster, you're going to hit her back turn if she's stuck in back turn. What that means is you could hit her in the back with certain strings, jab strings. For example, most of King's 10 hit combo will connect on her back when you block this. Uh, another good example is Geese. 1, 2, 3 on her back will start juggles because 1, 2, 3 floats people. The other key thing to note though is whatever string you hit her in the back with, there has to no, there has to be basically no gap in that string because that parry activates on frame one. So now that we got that explanation out the way, mash, 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 right? See what happens if I delay it? Now let's see if I don't delay it. 
Okay. See? That right there should tell you everything you need to know. There's no gap in there for inputting any sort of attack. The only thing I could think of that would beat out 1-2-1 one, one without a delay is like an EXDP. If I put any sort of delay on it, if I put any sort of delay on it, oh. It gets blown up. Mm-mm. Is that move that stuns after the back? No, well, it's a, I'm mashing it out to make sure that she does it during my string. That fucking, that double palm, if that punch parries you, it's a juggle starter. That is a juggle starter. Any tips on dealing with the opponents throwing out down one? McWiff and down ones are linear, and you can low parry them and low crush them. If you have a read on when your opponent is throwing out a down one, you could low parry, low crush, or sidestep. The input for that is forward plus one plus two when Ling Zhaoyu's back turn. That's why I was mashing forward one plus two. That's why she's doing the shoulder over and over again. I'm mashing it to show you that if I delay, uh, if I delay, oh yeah, back dash works too. That's true, sorry. If I delay any sort of jab strings, she could catch the later hits in the string. You know, that's, that, that's why if you're gonna test punishing that move specifically on a back turn Ling Zhaoyu or testing what works, you have to test uh, full strings against mashing out that specific parry. Also, the reversal, also, which I forget the input for at the moment. The reversal is just like a, I forget if she even gets anything for free off of it, but she kind of just parries your shit like Jin does with it. So, anyway, so 1 2 1 is still good. So, 1 2 4 and 1 2 1 both punish that. We also have 1 2, wait, 1 2, 1 1 4, 1 4 3, 1 4 3, which is shitty damage. So, you must do 1 2 4. I don't think that's gonna combo. <sighs> so I'm gonna go back to Brian. All that yippity yapping just for the one two follow ups. It's a lot to take in there. Yeah, I, one four three three. I suspect that she will be able to duck that. Because the 3-3 three, three in the end is not natural, is it? No problem, McWiffin. What's the input for her back turn frame? When I just said, I just said, the punch parry is forward 1 plus 2. The other one I don't remember at the moment. The, the manual parry, I don't remember at the moment. I, it's going to be in the bottom of her move list, right under the grabs. Or right before, maybe. I think under the grabs. Yeah, that's not going to work on a back turn opponent. I don't think that is. So check this out, Milo. This is what's going to happen if you do this to Ling Zhaoyu. Ugh. Got to input one forward with like no delay. What the fuck? Whatever. So I'm going to let him hit me with the one forward, then I'm going to duck. See? And then you're going to get launched. <laughs> Maybe not launched. He recover. He seems to recover pretty quick. No, never mind. You're going to get launched. So don't do that <laughs> to a penny back turn opponent. Especially Ling Zhaoyu, who's very familiar with being in back turn and getting away from stuff from back turn. 1-2-4, on the other hand, you're good. Or 1 2 1 if you're so inclined, but 1 2 4 is more rewarding. Yeah, the Ling didn't know what they were doing. Uh, no problem, David. No problem, David. I've seen people do 3 3 2. I think. I've seen that too. Uh, Aris talked about this. There's some sort of weird mix up, right? Because then he has 3 3 uh, 3 3 4, but. I was talking about the one four stuff because we're talking about punishing Ling Zhaoyu's root kick, which means you need eleven or ten frames. That's why. So I'm not even thinking about like doing slower things on the back turn opponent. I've definitely seen this though. It's happened to me too. I don't think it's guaranteed though. 
But there is like a mix up. I just don't remember it. Look at that. What about if the second it hits you? Let's see. That might be it. Okay, even if the second it hits you, there's nothing. But if I try to turn around, it's going to hit me. Let's see. Yeah, if you hold back, it's going to all combo. You have to hold down back. Mondo cool. Drank Jaeger. Thanks for the follow. So if you just hold back, that's going to combo. What about if you hold forward? That's the faster way to turn around. Now, nah, if you hold forward, you're still going to get comboed. You have to hold down. Which means he could hit you with... <laughs> All of that on your back. Right? They both start with three. As a matter of fact, that would probably be the better guaranteed option. This is just to catch people that just don't know any better, like me. <laughs> or even when they don't know better, they're just not ready for it. But guaranteed, this is going to be guaranteed. Maybe not on Ling Zhao Yu or Raven, but on most characters. All right, so that's all the one-two stuff. <sighs> With how much you lab and know about Tekken, who do you really mean? I don't mean anyone right now. Marduk's not in the game, and I don't consider myself a good player because I don't play to compete. So if I were playing to compete, I would focus on one character and uh, try to compete. And honestly, it's a boring answer, but I'd probably focus on Kazumi. I know, I know. Kazumi or Geese? Probably Kazumi more, more likely. Because she's so much simpler and I don't have to think much about what I'm doing. Like, wh let me put it... Alright, I said that wrong. When I say that I don't have to think about much about what I'm doing, that implies that it's like a brain-dead character. Not sure. You still have to think about what you're doing in regards to tech and neutral and shit. But like, move selection-wise, I don't have to think about what I'm doing. And I highly value that. Just like Iris does. It's part of why it sucks so much with Feng when I've been trying to play Feng. Too many options, too much to think about. Too many good options, and too many options that are good for specific situations, but not as good as his other options are for other situations. So you kind of, you know, it's not, you can't really keep it that simple with Feng. You can, but, you know, you'd be really handicapping yourself. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about the 1-4 options in detail now. So we got 1-4, like I said. 10 frame Punisher, a popular one. Especially if you sidestepping up close. Right? Because the thing about sidestepping up close, forward two is a move. So it's going to overlap it if you try to do sidestep forward two. Why is that important? Well, sidestep one is a move. How do you get around that if you want to do a sidestep jab? Sidestep forward one. This is why you'll see Mr. Naps sidestep one four instead of sidestep two three. Because sidestep two is also a move. You can't do sidestep 2-3 unless you sidestep, stop, and then do a 2-3. You're going to do sidestep, forward 1-4. That's how you do that. Which is much more rewarding than sidestep, forward 1-2. Duh. So that's why you see Mr. Nass when he sidesteps up close and goes for a quick punish. Or punish on a quick whiff. It's 1-4. Because you can hold forward to cancel out of his built-in sidestep move. But you cannot do that with 2-3. With because he's going to get forward to. You follow? Simple. So yeah, 1-4 is a key move. Very important. Up close with Punisher from sidestepping. Uh, decent block Punisher if you need 10 frames. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, then we got the follow-ups. Okay, so starting with from the top, 1-4-2. Oh, and yeah, what I forgot to test is, does 1-4 jail? It does. It jails, too. How nice. It is negative 7, though. But it jails. Cannot duck it. Alright. So, we got 1, 4, 2. Counter hit tool. Plus 4 on hits. Uh, negative, also negative 7 on block, just like 1, 4 is. But definitely duckable, right? Like, no, no shocker there. But if you try to swing at him, even with a jab... Now here, there's a big enough gap where if you want to do something like a Yoshimitsu Flash to punish him for trying to go for this, you could totally do that. But much like I talked about earlier with his 1-2-1, one, one, or 1-2 one, options in general, uh, you could attach them in the end while you're doing just general 1-2 pressure to blow people up for swinging. You could do that here too. The thing is, 
when you try to swing again after a one form block, you are at negative seven, so it's a bigger risk. Negative two into into more attacks is not anywhere near as big a risk as negative seven is. Duh, simple math, right? But that is there to you know as a safe on block option, dunk up a safe on block option to blow people up for swinging at you after blocking a one four. Oh. All right, let's try this. Um, Okay, no, because he jails, I can't really do that. All right, so if the four hits you by itself, he's too far to really... Oh, here's another idea. Okay. Okay, so if the four manages to counter hit you by itself, the two is guaranteed. That's really only going to happen if people duck under the first hit and while standing count, get counter hit by the second hit. So it's not really anything to think about. Maybe sidestep. Man, what is up with Brian's jabbing? Is it just because Brian is getting himself is getting clipped trying to go uh, left? So weird. Okay. So I guess I can't really test that in that way. I'm trying to see if I can back sway, but I'm I'm ducking instead. Thanks for the follow, Davidism. Well, anyway, I'm trying to back, see if I can back sway after the second hit, but I'm getting a duck instead because of the way it recovers, I guess. All right, well. Okay, so then we got one, four, two, one, right? Same thing going on here. Except in this case, the one is a uh, normal hit juggle starter. Reminds me of Mardik's old forward two, one. Uh, and it is zero on block in this case. And I'm pretty sure if he were to counter hit you with the four, he could still convert if he does both hits. Also, he could cancel out of this. Right? Yeah, you could sidestep cancel out of this. You still have to input the one. So one forward two one, just like back to one. Um, you could sidestep in either direction by inputting the one and then sidestepping right after. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, see? As you can see, the way he recovers, you could still do whatever the hell you want and juggle after that. And of course, if I try to swing after that one... See, if I miss time my while standing punishment on the first high, he's pretty he's in pretty decent shape. See? Can't sidestep it, can I? It's pretty good at that zero. Of course you can duck the second high also. So there's risk involved here, but man, if you don't know what's going on. You will eat a ton of fucking damage. See, I didn't know that this second back fist was zero on block. That's fucking good. This is stuff that's, like, really good at a low level. Still kind of decent at a mid-level. But then when you fight, like, you know, really good players, it all kind of falls apart. <laughs> it's kind of gimmicky. But it's still, like, pretty good. Still pretty good. That's why you don't see Mr. Naps doing a ton of, ton of that, right? You don't. There's a reason. Uh, I know in some cases it's also a, ju a weird juggle filler, right? What's up, Frozen Zerker? What's going on, Straw Hat Law? Didn't know you were a Yakuza fan. I'm a very big Yakuza fan. If I could get the money, I will be buying Yakuza Kiwami 2. Release for the cancel back to one if you fuck a, a Taunt Jet Up or up. Good call, yes. Back to if you notice it. Yeah. Uh, we're doing Brian now. All about that life. What's up, Frozen Zerker? 3 2 would be the mix up with how much? Okay, got it. All right. So there's a lot going on with 1-4 here. Next we got 1-4-2-1-2. Which is just a fucking mock breaker. 
This is a classic Brian string. He's had this fucking forever. Uh, mate, you, yo, you wish you could get all this on an opponent's back, don't you? Look at all that damage. <laughs> 78 damage. Let's record it and see what we get here. I don't think there's any reason to complete this whole string, really, unless you're just try trying to, like, fuck with somebody and gimmick them out, I guess. Right? Yeah, it'll... In oh, wow, it jails? It jails. Oh, shit. The last two hits jail. Interesting. And even though it's negative nine, it pushes all the way back here. <laughs> it fucks up the combo opportunity, but he gets 39 damage, and it's a high that jails. Okay. Well, there's not much else to say there. So you have to duck the hit before it. And if you, once again, if you come up with a wall standing move too early, that last hit will smoke you. Whew, okay. All right, next we got, um, we talked about the size to cancel already. So now we got one, four, two, four. Okay, so I know the back two, four is a core screw move and no difference here, right? If you happen to catch somebody in the air with that, I don't know why you would, but if you do, that will be a core screw. Yeah, see? They try to hot kick if you think you're going to low after a 1 4, I guess. I don't know. That could happen. Uh, that is not a natural combo, and it is only negative 5, but it is very linear. But I suppose if people duck thinking you're gonna go into the other backhand, the high, they'll they'll be forced to deal with the the kick. So that's just one way to use this. Yeah, it's really hard to come up with a while standing moving time. And even if you come up with a launcher, because he jumps, that's what happens. So you have to come up with something fast. His while standing three is 12 frames and has counter hit properties. So um, it's fast enough to catch him in the pre-jump frames. But any like 14, 15 frame while standing launchers. Unless you come up instantly really fast with it. You're going to float him out of the air. And chances are it's going to fuck up your juggle. Unless you're Jin, I guess. Or a couple other characters like Bob. <clears throat> but it is very linear, right? Okay. Um, one for. He could also do. After the second backhand. And in that case. If you complete the string, that will be three hits. Wow! Hold up. Hold up a second. I just realized something. That's... Those two hits are unscaled. So the 70% doesn't start until after the second backhand if he commits to both. I did not realize that. I did not realize that. That's crazy. That doesn't work. Interesting. All right. I did not realize that until I just saw that string. But if you commit to all the hits of that string, you'll naturally be able to get a combo. If either the first uh, back fist counter hits you, the second one normal hits you, you'll be able to convert. But once again, same thing going on, I think, right? It's still negative five. Still negative five. Still very linear, right? Oh, wow. Not, not that linear, apparently. Am I sidestepping too late? No, that's just hitting me. Okay. And unlike the mock breaker, I mean, I suppose it doesn't matter. Like, why would you try to duck the mock breaker if the mock breaker jails you, right? If you jail, then you force to block the high. There's no real reason to duck. 
So if you're going against Brian and you're dealing with this whole string, don't duck after the second back fist. You could try to step, I guess, right? Because the mock breaker jails you, so there's no reason not to step here. There's no reason not to try to step. Oh, wrong way. To your right. See? Because you're just going to block. See? So if someone's trying to gimmick you with this shit, just, unless you're Gigas, I guess, step to your right. Oh. Alright, maybe confirm that there's a whiff. And then do the thing you got to do. Oh, well, step deeper than that. You get the idea, right? There's no reason not to attempt the sidestep right there. Unless you're Gigas, probably. You won't be able to do it. Or Jack, maybe. Or Kuma. Uh, the last hit also clips people who are slow on their wild standing punishment. Correct. Yeah. Alright. So that's the 1-4 business. But we're not done yet with 1-4. That's the 1-4-2 options. Lastly, we got 1-4-3. And that's the mid option, and then we talked about this before, 3-3 three, three, mid-high. What I don't like about this string is you need the third hit to counter hit you to get the last hit. So, this used to have a purpose in DR. This used to be something you would, um, if you were to, like, for example, one for them at the end of your wall carry, and then they hit the wall, then you could get 3-3 three, three, and then, like, a last hit follow-up as a wall combo. That might still be a use for this if you happen to be wall carrying with Jazz, but I don't think you do that with Brian anymore, right? You do that new shit. That shit, right? That's the wall carry shit now, so I don't know what the use is for this other than as another option to check people with 1-4 on block. So if they do 1-4 on block, you can go for that as a high, or you could check them with this third hit, which is a mid. It is negative 10, though. And the high is negative 7. No counter hit properties on the last hit. That is a nice chunk of damage, though. 21 damage. <sighs> so, he has, like, a pretty high-risk, low-level mind game attached to his 1-4 string. But 1-4 by itself is still good. Clearly. Outside of all that junk after it, 1-4 by itself is still good shit. Alright. Next. Standing 2 is also 10 frames. Plus 7 on hit. Plus 1 on block. So, hey, you could use a 2 <laughs> for block pressure or a 1. And then he has 2-3, which is the only follow-up. If you want a, if you want to kill people, here's a nice trick, right? You're going to learn, if you're, if you're a Brian man, you're going to work your way up to the really hard taunt stuff. But even before you get there, you could always work in a taunt into a 1-4. That's not hard to do. Or a taunt for more damage into a 2-3. Not hard to do. That's worth doing because that's a fucking round ender, right? That's totally a round ender. That's a round ender right there that you can put into your arsenal. Unblockable, free 24 damage. Do that shit. Otherwise, it's your highest damage 10 frame punisher. And it's kind of all you got until uh, 13. Really, really 14 frames. It's more damage than his 13 frame string, which is fucked up. So you really, it's really, this is really all you got, you kind of got until negative 14 jet up. <laughs> That's one of Brian's weaknesses. His block punish isn't particularly great on a standing opponent, at least. <clears throat> all right, so is there any tracking involved with 2-3? Lola Palooza, what's up? You can cancel back to into the kick by inputting forward four? Forward four? Wait, what? You don't need a, you don't need forward four. It's just back two four. Is that what you're talking about? Or is there something else you're trying to talk about talk about there? That's just back two four. If you, you know. Oh that, okay, I didn't know that. It's a, so you could fake out the back fist. Alright, yeah, I guess. If people are good enough to see a specific back fist move and react by ducking. I guess that's there. I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to say you won't hit people with that, but, like, for its intended purpose, I don't think it's good for that. 
you want to kind of fuck with people. There are some people that like react. That would be better if you could cancel it into nothing. Then there would be some usage, right? Cancel it into nothing or cancel it into the kick. That's just a goofy looking thing. All right, so I was trying to test this, right? Okay. Yeah, as you can see, his two seems to track to his right. That's so weird. That is so fucking weird. I gotta test something. That is so weird. Man, that, this might be the first instance of a jab just naturally tracking like this that I've seen. And I know Brian sidestepping is not bad. I don't know if it's average or above average, but I know it's not bad. I guess his, his, if you're up close at least, his two jab. Oh, there it is. But if you're really in his face, if you really up in his face. But if you're like not up in his face, you get around it pretty easily. Interesting. I feel like I've been hit by Brian's jab strings like this, and I'm wondering why. I'm like, jabs aren't supposed to track this well. Apparently his does if he's right up in your face. All right. I gave it the old Lily test. So 2-3 is, uh, it is negative 10 on block. I didn't pay attention to see if it pushed back. Hmm, interesting. Another thing about 2-3, if this is right, let me test this right now. So it jails in the sense that I cannot match and get counter hit by the, the second hit. But if I get counter hit, interesting. Let's see. Hold on. Aha! I forgot about that. So if you get a counter hit on the two, the three knocks back. Alright, but it is punishable. I think he always had that. I'm I think he always had that. I don't know if he always needed a counter here, but I think that used to always knock back too. It's like a ghetto Affinity Wars version of Feng back one. I suppose, but you're not getting anything for free off of it. I mean, it's easier to punish because it's like, you know, you're infinite. Here. But having another knockdown as Brian is good. Brian likes, likes knocking people down. That's very good for Brian. All right, um... So next we got standing three, 14 frames or 16 frames. That's 14 damage, 16 frames, right? Yeah, 16 frames startup, negative four on block, plus seven on hits. No counter hit properties yet. And we got three, two, which doesn't combo on normal hit. Does combo on counter hit. So this is the old Bruce uh, special, whatever, right? I forget what Bruce used to call this move. I think it was called the Bruce Special. Whatever. Then we got 3 2 1. Okay, that's also a com uh, counter hit combo. Okay. Natural combo on the second and third hit. Okay, so 3 2 1 2. And then three, two, one, four as a built-in mix-up. No delay. Yeah, you cannot delay either option. Now, here's something I always wondered about this. Is this really a 50-50? So the mid option knocks down. The low option leaves him at zero and is only negative 11. I 
I did not know that this was unsafe. I thought this was safe. Maybe it used to be. Okay. Oh, no. You gotta deal with that shit. Why am I going to 100? I don't need 10. Seems like the low is a little bit slower. Okay. Yeah, if you get hit by the hit before the low, you cannot low parry the low. Okay, got it. Let's see if I can do this. Nah, I'm, they hit really close together. They hit really close together. Yeah. I'm trying to delay my low pair in case you're wondering what I'm doing because it looks like the low hits a bit slower. But that could just be in my head. Either way it goes, this is a low reward mix up and you could punish both options. If you guess low, do a low pair instead of a low block. And punish it like harder. Not much else to say about this string. Uh, I'm pretty sure it all combos on the back. Doesn't look like there's anything you can do about that shit. And it does knock back. All right, so next we got 3-3. Three, three. Oh, yeah, let's test the tracking. Okay, no inherit tracking at all. Ooh, even that second hit. If you go right. Oh, my God, what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus. So he's kind of ducking a bit. <laughs> I made that jet upper whip. Three, three. Counter hit combo. Three, three, two versus three, three, four. Will they duck or won't they? Three, three, four is negative 12 with a ton of pushback. 332 is a high negative seven launcher. Counter hit on the second hit. I'm trying to see if I can delay it. Nah, you can't really delay it. Negative four. Hmm. Interesting. Daytona. Hmm. Interesting. So if they sidestep to your left, they have to input their thing really quick. Otherwise, that will counter hit them and they'll blow you up. Red Furies, what's up? What's going on? Still pretty early on. Yeah, 332 is the scrub killer. And you can step that. Definitely cannot step that. So you can hold back on that knockdown. Nothing guaranteed. 
they don't hold back, you get something. I'm sure you're gonna run up quarter circle back four, but otherwise you could just hold back. And negative 12 with pushback. So you're good. But it is very linear, but they try to step, the jet upper will hit them. Definitely a scrub killer. All right, next we got Magic Four. Quattro, Quattro Vagina. Brian's Magic Four is 12 frames instead of your standard 11 frame. And he has a conversion that is not easy. Not easy at all. Reminds me of Marduk. Marduk had to do a very difficult dash jab in his 13th frame. So if you want the easy conversion, Mock Breaker. Easier. 40 damage, better than nothing. But if you want the hard conversion, you got to get good at this dash jab. <laughs> As you can see, not easy. What makes it not easy is because uh, the Magic 4, when it counter hits them, it makes them move slightly off axis to your left side. That shit ain't easy. Oh, they gave him this. What do you know? So if you commit to a four three, he could uh, he can convert it. But you generally don't want to do that because then it makes you m much more wide open when you whiff. For example, keep out magic four. The whole idea is you're just doing that one swing and that's it, and you're putting it down. But if you commit to both hits that's a much bigger whiff that's the problem with that now yes sure you could have this much like you know easier conversion but you also want to get used to converting the four by itself you don't want a bigger whiff trust me the, the better opponent you fight the more you'll uh fake me for telling you that if you don't know that already <laughs> um yeah magic force used to be so so cheap as keep out because they recovered so much faster in dr the big Magic 4 nerf, uh, oh, and in Tekken 6. The big Magic 4 nerf was in Tekken Tag 2. That's when he all started becoming negative 9 on block and worse on whiff. But in fucking Tekken 6 and DR, man, Magic Force was such horseshit. So that's the uh, easy mode conversion, right? 4 3 charge 4. Yeah, no matter what range looks like. No matter what range, you could convert it off of that. The damage uh, is, I'm sure, much worse than what you would get otherwise if he did a regular conversion. All right, let's see here. Four, three, uh, so four is negative seven plus six. Uh, negative seven on block plus this on hit. Four, three is negative 10 on block plus four on hit and on counter hit. If you counter hit with the second hit, the last hit non-charge knocks back. Otherwise, negative 12. And then if you charge it, negative 9. And it knocks back. That is a huge gap. 18 frames. All right. That's a huge gap. And on counter hit, you got to juggle. All right. Pretty nasty one starting at 30 damage. Alright. 
See, even doing something like this, I was like, I'm confirming the whiff. Oh, he whiffed. I'm going to jet up or him, right? It, without, like, all right, see, I'm confirming the whiff and then inputting a jet up her. You would not be able to do that in older, in, like, second DR, right? <laughs> he would recover way too fast. Even with a 13-frame jet upper, he would recover way too fucking fast if you sidestepped it so close. All right, so that's that string. It seems like so far for this uh, string pressure, you want to go to your right. Alright, so next on the list is 1 plus 2, we got a homing move, mid homing move, plus 6 on hit, 17 frame startup, um, on counter hit, plus 5, turns around, depending on your opponent, this is pretty damn good, you're not going to get anything guaranteed, but you will get some mix ups, now the thing is, hmm, I don't know if I know Brian's buttons well enough to really... Try that. Oh. Okay, no good. So that was twelve frames. There we go. So he gets his jab strings. Ah, oh. weird. All right, he only gets regular jab. One, one, two, one, four, something like that. He doesn't get. He doesn't get full jab strings. You turn around in time. You're gonna get hit. You can't block it, but you got to turn around in time to be able to block the end of the strings. And then if you duck, he gets like forward four or whatever, right? Uh... Yeah, see? So if you try to duck, to duck under the jabs, you can get launched in forward 4 1. Or you could turn around to stand block. But the thing is, you have to duck. I mean, you can turn around to stand block, but you have to duck to get away from the jabs. Wait. Huh. Pretty whack. All right. Okay. 
So, much more lower reward here, but <laughs> that sucks. What I will say is, when I try to duck under the jabs, he does hit me in the back with the down forward uh, two, which means you could do down forward two, three on the back. Not as good as uh, some good mix-ups are two, three, and down forward one. Hmm. Is down forward really that good in this situation? Let's see. You're right. Oh. Okay, that that makes me worried. That one whiff makes you think it's uh, it could fuck it up. Cause the good thing about down four to one is you could hit confirm it. But if you put any sort of delay, if, if it's pushing me out that much, putting any sort of delay on it is gonna fuck it up. Also, I just made it whiff. So if you don't hit with this up close, it could whiff. See? Mm. That makes you think the down forward two three is better. Even if it's unsafe. Yeah, no, it's only plus five. If he were at plus seven or plus eight, he would get a nasty mix-up. But instead, he just gets a basic low reward and kind of risky mix-up because if I duck the high, I'm going to launch you. Right? If your opponent ducks the high, they're going to launch you. All right. <clears throat> well, that way it goes. Yeah, it's one plus two, two. Which is a natural combo. If he counter hits you with the first hit, it knocks down. Second hit knocks down on counter hit. Okay, good. No wall spot on this though, unfortunately. Uh, second hit is negative 14 though. Yikes. Really? I didn't know that was that bad on block. All right. It's an armor between the hits. Oh, all right. Well, that's it for that move. The first, first is 17 frames. So the first hit by itself, that's a really good homie move. 17 frame mid safe homie move. I mean, it's not like Steve tier, but it's good. It's very good. Not in the skull fat. And it gives some decent rewards on counter. Next, three plus four. This is a key Brian move. This goes without saying, if you watch Mr. Nash play, or any good Brian play, you know how important this fucking move is. This is keep out. This is like your Kazuya forward three, right? This is some real keep out shit right here. This is some shit that when you're kind of, you know, back here in the neutral, throwing out stuff like this, magic fours, this is one of those things where I think they're going to run in now. And if it normal hits them, good. If they block it, so what? And if they get counter hit, you get a juggle. Right? You get a fucking juggle. It's that kind of move. But if they move well and they step around it, you're going to get fucked up. Because when else you gotta step well, I think, to go. So 
So it seems like you want to go to your right to get around it. If they make it whiff, though, he recovers pretty slow on whiff. Compared to the old DR version, which recovered so fucking fast. And this is one of those where if you block it, you can kind of do it again if you run in mindlessly, even though it's negative 13. See? I ran in with a jab, and I still got counter hit. So that's a really, 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 really good move. What's the actual juggle? Isn't it? Like that. That a juggle? What's going on, Maddox? Into the Jimmy J knees. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't even get the first one. Boner hour on pad. Fuck. Damn, that first one is hard to get. Uh, random note, just notice Miguel's rage drive whiffs the first hit on Master Raven on any range. Uh, the thing about Miguel's really shitty rage drive is the only purpose of it is to convert off of his knockdown lows. There is no other reason to use that rage drive. Zero. I'm not kidding, this is way easier on pad. <laughs> For me, at least. Damn it, that third one. <laughs> it 
It looks like it's going to be a ton of damage, so I can see why it's worth learning. Not easy to do. <laughs> that was 75 right there, but isn't he still supposed to get a, a mock breaker in the end? Or was that it? That can't be the end of the juggle. Isn't there a mock breaker? But whatever, the easy juggle is fully charged forward forward three, up forward three, dash up forward three, sorry. And then one. Back three, forward to cancel the crash dash. Four, one, two. Easy shit, right? Oh, boy. I say that, but I'm dropping it. So you 72 damage. That's the easy shit. That's also wall carry. So if you're new to this whole thing, that's the shit to do. Yep, you could just do up forward three. I thought you had to dash up for some reason because it whipped the first time. That up forward three is a lot harder to hand to land in juggles than it used to be because the core screw knocks them away. Before, anytime you would use it, you would be like right up in their face, just like that. So it was way, you know, it's way easier to do in the older games. But even then, it's not that hard to do here. It's just the timing is a little janky if you're not used to it, like me. All right. Three plus four, key move, goes without saying. It is negative 12, on, or sorry, 13 on block, so if their back is to the wall, I think that's when they can punish this. But in general, you're not. this is going to go unpunished unless they make it whiff. So if you're against Brian, sidestep to your right to make this shit whiff. I will test it off of a jab, even though you're never going to see it in this situation. You're going to see it as keep out in the neutral. You're not going to see it like jab into that. So it's like, even if it's linear here, which it isn't. You really want to test this, like, randomly stepping in from back here. You know what I'm saying? So, like, record him doing a couple of some random movements, right? You know? And then do it. And then record a couple of, you know, variations of that. And then just try to just sidestep cancel to your right. Get it to whiff. You know? See, that's what you don't want to have happen. You know, step guard. Then the moment he gets a whiff. Jesus Christ, it's not easy to step. The moment he gets a whiff, launch his ass. But definitely step guard to your right in the neutral versus Brian. Because that's going to be the move that's coming. You know this. You know this. You know. We all know this. This is the shit that's going to be coming. So step guard to your right in the neutral. Uh, normal hit, they could get away from any follow-ups unless they're near the wall. But if they stay down, you want to quarter circle back four for your mid versus whatever the hell you do for uh, grounded hits. A down four hits grounded, I know that. I don't think down three does. Down back three does. It'll probably be down four if they stay grounded, if I were to guess. For a low option. Mid option, you ideally you want quarter circle back four. You can float them with down back too if they stay down. And they get up, you can talk them. Oh, that's the old school shit, right? That shit still works. Damn, the float off of that still works. I thought they would take that away. All right, so you got that mix up. Right? Damn, why am I getting a throw? I know why. Damn, how do you time that? You have to do the 
the taunt cancel dash, right? Also, I got to do it like this. Um, you have to double taunt. Ugh. That's, that's that shit. There it is. Oh, man. That's so fucking weird. Also, I keep getting throws because I'm holding forward because of the dash. So you have to dash neutral to input taunt, then dash and taunt again, right? Because you have to cancel out the first taunt. Well, I'm not going to get into that now. Uh, I'll get to taunt when I get into it next time or whatever later on. But note that, just worth noting that, you could down back to the flow, and if they tech, you can taunt them, double taunt. To track so keep that in the back of your mind and I'm sure if they're near the wall you get guaranteed follow-ups right because they're not gonna be pushed back as far like a down three two what up big shorty did you shorty Oh, down three was four two or forward four two. Forward four one, you mean. Alright, cool. Cool. And if you want to floor ooh. Okay, and that could floor break if you're in the floor break stage. There's a guaranteed shit near the wall. Cool, good shit. <clears throat> so there's some... <laughs> Damn, that sidestep one really fucks with this. Does he even have the jab anymore out of that? You have to do forward one, right? Because he did not have that sidestep one before, I think. I think that's new to this game. So, next. That's three plus four. Key move. Next is forward two, one, four. Forward two, one, four. Natural combo. 42 damage. Knockdown. Does not wall splat. Nothing guaranteed. The key way to use this move is it's uh, simple simpler taunt cancel for more damage than your simple jabs right if you're uh it's that mid-tier taunt move there it is basically you want to input the forward two right when his knee is like halfway up there it is that's too early let's do it like this so you can see it easier Double guard all, right? Oh, that's too early. Yeah. Basically, the whole idea about taunt cancels, inputting them, is if you're waiting to, like, confirm that the, the taunt, that the taunt hit, you're too slow. You have to input it prematurely, essentially. Otherwise, it's not going to combo. So, otherwise, it's negative 13 on block. It is a high damage mid, mid, mid knockdown, whatever, right? So, I mean, I guess it's not useless outside of Tom, but really, that's the only way to really, really use this move. Um, it is a 15 frame punisher, but he has a 14 frame launcher. I suppose if you have to punish with 15 frames and they're crouching, then you could throw this out. That's another way. You know, if they recover crouching, a, a jet upper is going to whiff because it's a high. So, that's another use for this. Uh, you guys know of any other uses for it? Mm -mm -mm. 
I can't find anyone in ranked and rarely in quick match. Oh man. Wait, what happened? Today's uh Tuesday. Tuesday? Or Wednesday? What is today? Today's Wednesday. Never mind. I was about to say today's Tuesday, so the server's going down for a bit, right? Yeah, no other uses of the taunt move, except for, like I said, if you have to punish with uh, 15 frames and they're crouching for some reason, anything like that, then you could use that. So next is forward three. This is another key Brian move right here. This is a classic. Zero on block counter hit to 16 frames. Very good. Brian is basically a counter hit character. He has a lot of counter hits going on in case you didn't catch on yet. Uh, zero on block knee 16 frame counter hit to. Uh, I think this also tracks well. At least it used to. If it doesn't, you have to make it track. It doesn't anymore. This in Tekken DR tracked both sides very well. Now it slightly tracks to his left, but I got around it that first time. But I go to my left now. So you essentially have to sidestep with your opponent to catch them with this. And if they happen to block, so fucking what? It is zero on block. Very, 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 very good move. It's one of those that you could blow up sidestep poking with pretty well. But you could sidestep it left. There's not much else to say. Counter hit. You got to juggle, right? Oh, boy. Really, that just whips like that? <sighs> I keep it's back there. I keep putting forward three like dragon off. Got the delay. Nice. Whatever. Big sample combo shit. It's not the real combo, I'm sure. Side step right into down back two, sure. I mean, you get down back two. That seems like a shitty pickup for low damage. You gotta get better shit than that. next I should test uh, I tested that already four four is next this is mainly a whiff punishing tool although I suppose if you, if you just want to go mid and get better reward than most other mids on normal hit for a lot of range like for example instead of that you could replace it with this for a riskier option but more reward negative uh, 13 does it force crouch It do. So be careful who you use this on. Some characters will launch you for that. Yes, Eddie's being one of them. Josie being another. <laughs> Eddie can launch Corsa go back three. He sure can. Uh, so can Josie. So can Kazuya. 
Uh, geese with meter will make this hurt on block while standing one quarter circle back one super repukin. Some characters will only get a while standing four. For example, Feng Wei. Brian only gets while standing three. He gets nothing else. While standing four, while standing three. While standing three being more damage. That's not a natural combo. Man, that second knee does so much damage. Fuck. <clears throat> but yeah, forward one is a great whiff punisher. Instant bound. Even if the second it connects by itself, it's going to instantly bound. So you can convert off of it. And you can do whatever the fuck you want, right? Damn, that second knee hits so hard. Fuck. No wonder why that wall combo always does so much damage. Look at that second knee. Fuck. Look at that me. Why does that hit so hard? Uh, playlist ended. <sighs> anyway, I don't think this thing tracks at all. A second it does. Damn, that shit has like this psychic hitbox. It doesn't track, but if it clips you from like all the way across the screen, he's gonna convert off of it. Of course, it also spikes for floor break. Very shitty damage though, because they're both like 10 damage hits. It's, you know, two hits is gonna fuck up his juggle skelly, so you're probably not gonna wanna break the floor with that unless you have to. For example, that 3 plus 4 near the wall. You could floor break with that. So that's it for that move. Next, forward one plus two. Now this is an interesting move. It is. Plus eight on block. Knocks down on normal hit. One weird thing is, it says it tail spins. I'm not seeing that here. They must mistake in this for dragon offs. They must mean counter hit. Not even. So this is not a tail spin move. Yeah, RB Norway is bullshit. They must have mistaken this for dragon offs version. Dragonos version is a launcher that course cruise. Brian's version is a knockdown that is plus on block. Guaranteed follow-ups. You can't back roll that. Interesting. Yeah, you're right. That is more damage.
Damn it. Yo, I'm trying to quarter circle back four. Oh my god. There we go. Damn, that's not even worth it. 64 damage. Same as Snake Edge. Which is much easier to do. Still, 64 damage plus 8 on block. Still pretty good. And then course took a forward one plus two otherwise. Good move. I didn't realize it was this good. I don't know if it was plus that much in the older games. <clears throat> plus eight, man. Plus eight, and you're right in their face. For those of you that don't know, oh well, not really. Well, plus eight is enough to make a lot of Lanier moves be unstoppable. Mirio, thanks for the follow. Now check this out. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna make him try to sidestep after blocking. Stand guard. Let's see. Um, knee was step left, right? Okay. How about this? All of a sudden, he can't step left, right? See, jab. You can do it. This. Oh, sorry. This. Can't do it. How about it for this? You can still do it in plus three. So plus eight makes. Oh shit! <laughs> okay, I have to mash it out. Not waste a single frame. Good. 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 See? You're down forward. Your 13 frame poke is good. Down two is good. That's good too. Good setup for that. Down three, down four, down back three. <laughs> of course, circle back three, not so much. Orbital. Let's make him go right. Orbital. Not neutral jump. Up forward orbital. Up forward orbital. Clips. How about side walk? Alright. If they try to step, orbital will clip. But walk, it will not. walk that though not three plus four which will also be a counter hit setup for three plus four right yeah plus eight it'll exchange with jabs so yeah very good move no shortage of options you can pretty much use any low poke and he will not be able to step it i don't know how much tracking his lows have naturally but in that situation they definitely track very well hey what's up I don't know why Court Circle 4 1 Pursuit doesn't work in this specific situation. Uh, my guess, Milo, is it has to do with the recovery, right? They're low to the floor when the Rage Drive connects. So my guess is he's recovering later. That doesn't make any sense, does it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Something to do with him hitting him when they're low to the floor. That's my guess. While when he usually does a rage drive, he hits them while their legs are up in the sky much higher. Right? Okay. So that's that. Next is forward one plus four. Oh, yes. This shit right here. This is some shit where I've seen Brian players start to troll me with this. And I always forget because I'm never ready for Brian players to just throw this out in the middle of a match. Here's the thing about this. It's a very fast unblockable. But you may already notice. It's negative 12 on hit. It is punishable on hit. It is just a very fast way to end the round. If you need a fast unblockable. But of course, like I said, you can just do taunt into a 2-3. Um, for even more damage. But 4-1 four, plus 4 is another option. So, if you want a fast unblockable, you can do that. But you are punishable if you... Uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to react to, I guess. It's like, because how often do you see that to be ready to punish it? 
but whatever. Be wary, because you can't totally punish that fast version. And it hits at it hits at a mid level. So you cannot duck it. Does the same damage. Yes, it's a great round ender, correct. Uh, I don't think it tracks. No, it's back. Back one plus four is a slow blockable. Yeah, see? No tracking. 28 frames. <sighs> okay, so. Now we, now that we got that out of the way. Down forward one. Key Brian move. The down forward one series. Alright, so. So it's a weird input here. All right, so here's what's going on. Down forward one, he could do down forward one up to four times. Very delayable. And he could go into a two ender. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One. There it is. I don't know why this is so awkward input. Well, I knew no why, but whatever. I'll get to it in a second. Okay. So at any point, he could go into that, that two ender. Whether he does one, two, three, or four of the down forward ones. That's what makes this very hit confirmable. No matter how much he delays it, he could still combo. Except for the last hit. He has to... For the fourth down forward one, he have to, you have to press it kind of fast. And then you can still input the two in the end and get 34 damage. If you don't connect with that two in the end, it's very shitty damage. As you can see, it's only two per two damage per hit after the first hit. So the thing about this is it tracks, I believe, to both the uh, both directions. Okay, sort of. It definitely tracks to his left side. To his other side, it doesn't. But if he delays it, you know what? I should just make the AI sidestep. See? Alright, so if you go to your to your left, you can make you can fuck with this string, but if you go to uh, his left, you're gonna get clipped by it. Alright, so there's a couple of things to note here. Be because to make it hit confirmable, he has to delay it so much, there's a counter to this. I'll show you right now. Actually I have to record him doing it to me. So, as you can see, if he has to put the delays on it, you could backdash your way out of it. Even after I blocked the first one, up close. See? And the moment you make one whiff, you can launch him. So what I'm saying is, because of the delay he has to put to make this hit confirmable, you could always try to backdash it between the hits, and you will still block. And then the moment he whiffs one, you have to be ready to launch him. Fast, though. Or just, like, jab him. You're not sure. Because then, if he does whiff one, he could input the rest of them rapidly and still hit you, hit you with the ender. The reason you absolutely must hit confirm this is because the last hit, the mid, uh, the two, is negative 15. So this is a very awkward thing to input if you're not used to it, like me. You have to hold down forward the whole time you're pressing the ones. If you let go of down forward after the first down forward one, you're not going to get it. You have to hold down forward. And then to input the two, 
you have to input it almost like a tilde, one tilde to one after the other. So, say like that, or say, ba 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 ba. Say, ba 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 ba. You have to input the ba ba one after the other to get the 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 two in the end. If you 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 can only delay the down forward one 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 one. You cannot really put any sort of delay on that two at any point. So there is a amount of delay that you can put in there that will make it not combo. So you got to be careful with that. But if you get good at using this move, that is a very high damage hit confirm mid. 34 damage is nothing to scoff fat, And it starts up at 15 frames. So very, very, very good key move. Key Brian move right here. You have to get good with this move if you're going to play his character. It is too important. And of course, you could just do you could just do down forward one two as a fifteen frame punish. I guess I don't know why. Um, all right, have a good night, Miro. Thanks for the compliment, Miro. Thanks for the compliment, man. Negative ten on block. Oh, that's true too. The um, what is it? Yes. Um, at any down forward one after the first is negative ten on block. So of course you could you could swing with jabs also. My recommendation is to backdash and uh, try to get one of them to whiff. That's my recommendation. But still, like, Brian players tend to stop after, if you block it, they usually stop after the third hit. Usually. They don't go any further than the third. Because by the time the third hit is out there, you're going to have a pretty good idea on if it's going to be a confirm or not. You follow? You'll have a real good idea by then. So, chances are... When they're fishing for this, they're going to do three hits. Sometimes two. More often than not, you're going to see three hits. <clears throat> All right. And as I showed, if you sidestep away from the punches, the first two might clip you, or the first one will clip you. But they'll start to whiff eventually because he doesn't really realign. I was trying to see if he delayed if he realigns, but not really too much. All right, so next we have another key move. Down forward two. So I talked about this earlier. This is a 13-frame mid. It is an elbow, so Asuka reversals and shit do not work on it. Asuka counter does not work because it's an elbow. Down forward two, one. Mid-high natural combo. It is duckable. In 6.0, this was uh, this uh, used to jail. <laughs> Instead, they gave it in, uh, in BR, Tekken 6 BR, they gave it a this and they made this not jail anymore so down forward two three is the other option negative 13 on block counter hit string knocks down just like you plus four and if i'm not mistaken the three by itself works just like three plus four if you counter hit with the three by itself which is to say if they try to duck the down forward two one and come up with a wall standing move and they eat this you will get a juggle and you could delay the three a little bit to really fuck with them. And it seems like no matter how much delay I put, it combos. Yeah, no matter how much delay I put, it combos. Maybe it's maybe you can't really delay it at all. Maybe that's just in my head. Uh, but yeah, good strings, really good strings, both of them. And like, unlike the three plus four on block, which pushes out too much to be punished, the down four, two, three does not. Most of the cast could punish this fine. If not all the cast. <clears throat> so this is basically a key neutral poking for Brian. You know, the down four, two by itself is good. Down four, two ones by, uh, is good. Down four, two, three is good. It's good for Brian. Not not great in the grand scheme of things, but it's good for Brian. Uh, down forward two one is only negative four on block, plus four on hit. Down forward two by itself only negative six on block, plus five on hit.
Ooh, it seems to cover his right side. I didn't know that. Good for Brian. It seems like overall Brian is weak to sidestep right so far. Right? The only thing that tracked to his left side was the knee, right? So far? Is that right? No, not even. Alright, well. That's what happened the first time too, didn't it? Okay, so the knee, unless you're kind of far away, it seems like. Maybe not, I don't know. The knee seems to be the only consistent left side tracker outside of the homing move so far. Oh, yeah, and down forward one, of course. Yeah. But it seems like you get hit by way more shit going to your left. You get hit by way more shit, which makes down forward one even more important. Yet another reason it's so important. So the knee and down forward one tracks to his left side. All right, got it. But everything else tracks to Brian's right side. It's crazy. So yeah, that's that. Alright, good. Okay, it has enough range that I can't just backdash. Even from, like, the tip of his jab, I can't just backdash away from it. He moves forward a bit. That's what's good about that. If he didn't move forward, that range would be so shit. Alright. Next. Is down forward three, snake edge. I mean, what is there to say about this move? It's slow, it's seeable. You'll blow up low level opponents with it. Uh, so you can't really abuse it though, because it's seeable. Even shitty people can see this sometimes. You just need to have some decent reactions. And so I've seen this move a few times to know when it's coming. It is homing, it launches even at the tip. He gets a combo off of it no matter where it launches from. And it crushes highs and sometimes it low profiles mids, especially when you use it from a range, from a distance. On block, it is a negative 26. And yeah, that's it. It is snake catch. It hits grounded too, by the way. So, like, it is a, an option after his rage drive. If you spike with his rage drive, like I did before, you could totally use this as an option to hit him afterwards for decent damage. Not much else to say about that. You need to see that fucking move. You need to see it and block it if you're fighting against Brian. Every other move like it is called Snake Edge for a reason. It's all it all started with that. All right, next. Uh, it crushes on frame six apparently, according to RB Norway. It ducks on frame six, in case you were wondering. Next is down forward four. His other homing move. It is mid, which is nice. It does the sideways knockdown. I think on normal hit in mid-level stage, he gets quarter circle back four, right? I think that's guaranteed. I gotta, you gotta dash a bit, though. So, of course, they go back four, guaranteed. If they hold back, they get launched. That's only if you delay quarter circle back four. If you delay it with a dash up, then they'll get launched. Otherwise, you're just going to get it guaranteed, no matter what. Like, if you do it like this, maybe? I don't know if that was enough. No. Oh. There it is. Can I see? Ah. You might want to delay it. Because it's still guaranteed. Interesting. So you might want to do that delay on purpose. Because it's still going to be guaranteed. 
But if they hold back to get up, you're going to get a full launch. So there's no reason not to delay it with that dash up. That's nice. Great tool. Great tool to have. It is slow at 22 frames, but it is safe on block, right? Down forward four is negative six on block. Good move. Good move. Good move. But anyway, we're not done with that yet. You notice how it knocked down. I notice how it knocked down. We all notice how it knocked down. I'm sure we got something here. Damn, if Donback 2 doesn't pick up, though. Okay, so I don't think anything else is going to pick up if Donback 2 doesn't pick up, which it doesn't. At least not, not versus Brian. Mm. Yeah, doesn't look like it. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Any other ideas here for pickups? Maybe the weird angle gives you better Oki if you dash up. I don't think so. Ah, well. If down back to, yeah. If only he had the old down 3-2 from DR in 5.0. <laughs> he would totally be able to float and get a juggle. Maybe on Kuma he could down back to. All right. Down 4-4 four, four is still a great move. I wish they could back that. You wish. Of course you wish. It's a great fucking move. I mean, this down 3-2 is, is kind of all right. Not amazing, but that old down 3-2. Oof. Man, that was such a great Oki tool back when floats were around. All right. That's a homie move, so we don't have to test tracking, of course. It is on the slow side, so you can step guard it pretty easily. Next, down to... Yet another decent choice for a mid poke for Brian. Plus one on hits, not much, but it is only negative two on block. So if there is a go-to mid poke you want to use while moving around, this is it. Even if the reward on hit is slow, fine. Plus one is all you need to get one two, you know, counter hits. So that's fine. And it's only negative two, so solid choice. And it's an elbow, even better, right? It's an elbow. So it cannot be uh, generic reversal or punch parried. So great move. And it's also great because he has a follow-up with counter hit properties. So counter hit down to three. And if the three hits by itself on counter hit, he gets a juggle. So if people swing at you, when even though you're at negative whatever, two, you could totally delay the three also. And if you delay it, it seems like it's still combos. Now, you cannot counter hit confirm as far as visually. He animates the same when he gets hit. He just gets force crouching. Uh, is this plus one force crouching on hit? Yes. On hit, it forces crouch. Plus one. On counter hit, plus eight. Even though there's no visual difference. Plus eight. So, plus one force crouch, even better than I thought. Remember, when you force crouch your opponent, they can only instantly sidestep towards the background. Whatever the background is on their side. And even then, that knee, that second hit, is only negative 10. 
Really, really good string. Really, 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 really good. Really, 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 really good. I've definitely seen Mr. Naps use his down two as a poke. Oh boy. Whew. It is Lanier. Oh, and if he doesn't delay the down two, three, I cannot swing on that second hit. There it is. But if you put enough delay, then you get the gap and you could get that to counter hit. So you have to delay. Yeah, it's an underrated move by your average like Tekken player that just dicks it on with Brian. But I think any Brian mains will know that that is a move to be respected. That is a good move. I don't know if down two by itself was that good on block before. Or if that's a new thing, to be honest with you. But yeah, but if you watch Naps, you definitely notice that he does use that first hit. Not super often, but he does use it. Pretty fast here, moving along. Start is slow, but moving fast now. So now we got the lows. Okay, let's do the lows and then I'll call it for the night. Down three. Good old down three. Formerly plus one on block several games ago. Now it's zero. Sorry, plus one on hit. Now it's zero on hit. 16 frame startup, only negative 11 on block. Does it hit grounded in this game? No. Still doesn't hit grounded. Down four still does though, right? Yes. <sighs> and then he has down three, two, safe on block, low, high. That's a counter hit string. That knocks back for wall splat. So you can kind of use this like Feng's down four, one plus two, but safe on block, but it is a high. I'm very bad at ducking this personally. Like bad Brian players use this move very often on me, and I'm never ready to duck it. There's a lot of shit I'm not ready to duck though. would you say Brian becomes hard to win with uh, I don't know if I could put a rank to it uh, with the way people generally play online um, probably red ranks probably red ranks I guess with the way people play online that's when people will start to punish you for doing certain things but like the online landscape is so fucking weird in this game that it's like and it kind of doesn't matter because it's online it's like, who gives a shit, right? So when I say that you, uh, you know, it won't work against good players, let me uh, clarify. I don't just mean good players, but I mean good players that know the Brian matchup. <laughs> Let's put it that way. There are good players that, like, don't know certain matchups, and you get away with fucking murder on them, and they're not going to be ready to deal with a lot of your shit, you know? Like, what, one of the glaring weaknesses with Brian is his block punish sucks. Right? What does he get? He gets nothing until Jet Upper. Outside of that, he gets like 2 3, down forward 2 1. He doesn't get shit. And then at 14 frame, he gets Jet Upper. Right? And then uh, outside of that, you have to be pretty good at knowing how to move with Brian because he doesn't get much plus on block. Right? He gets back one, jab. Was it uh, forward 1 plus 2? Uh. What else is plus on block? I don't even know what else is plus on block. Not much. I'm sure there's like something else that I'm forgetting right now. Right? 
Yeah, it's not much else that's like plus on block. So essentially, you have to put yourself at negative constantly. So he loses his turn more often than not than other characters, you know? What's up, Strangler? Yeah, I hear a lot about how hard Brian is to play. He is. Why is Brian hard to play? Well, it's a few reasons. Uh, number one, he's a backsway character, so you have to ha uh, learn, you know, tricks for your backdash canceling. So that up front, that's the easy like thing to point out. Another thing, like I said, he doesn't have much plus on block, right? So yeah, sure you can rely on dumb strings like this, right? And you know, people may not know what to do. You know, you might fuck people up with some of these strings. You know, uh, but then there's other shit. For example, you have to know how to hit confirm this. That is a very important move. You have to know how to hit confirm that, and it's a re it's kind of an awkward input. Second of all, you have to be good at course to go back four confirms off of certain knockdowns, which is kind of unusual and kind of awkward. If you fuck it up, you're gonna get like back four, shit like that. Weird shit. Um, his juggles aren't super hard, but they're not the easiest. But they're not really that hard. I don't think they're that hard. You know? So, and then a lot of people, I feel like they're gonna bring up the taunt stuff. Fuck all that. Fuck the taunt stuff. That's like end, end game shit. We're talking about just straight up playing Brian in the neutral. He has a lot of good tools, but playing him in a neutral is not as easy as like some other characters. You know, you have to like think about certain moves in certain situations more often than not. And he has to, he has a lot of counter hit tools, but his counter hit tools are to catch people in a neutral situation more so than they are about, oh, I'm going to set this up with plus on block and really fuck you up for swinging with this counter hit tool. Like a Claudio sidestep forward to down forward two, for example. Brian is not about that with this forward three, right? This forward three is designed for you to like get up in people's faces, sidestep into that shit as a read. Oh, this guy is doing like jab, jab, sidestep into this poke. So the next time I block jab, I'm going to sidestep with him and do a forward three to catch him, right? For example, like if you see a Brian player get up in your face doing that kind of shit well then the answer is um, whoop, a little faster that's the answer see you just got to be fast with it but that is generally your answer so you got to be good at using counter hit tools you got to be good at some semi-awkward juggle conversions, you know, and uh, hit conversions like that. You got to be good at, that's not super hard, but, you know, semi-awkward, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, he has no real panic. What are you talking about? He has the ultimate panic move. <laughs> he has the ultimate panic move. <laughs> it's kind of hard to play Brian with frames. He's slow and gets beaten out. Yeah, sure, sort of. But he has really good tools. Like one, two, you know, the jab stuff. First thing I went through, all that good shit. You can interrupt second hit of down three, two with rage arts that have a down input. I didn't know that. That's funny. Or people that duck and then hit the rage art button, right? <laughs> that rage art with down inputs, that that's a weird ass fucking tech, right? Well, anyway, down three seems to track really well, right? Stand guard. Let's make him step. All right. Oops. That was an accident. Yeah. Yeah, no matter what I do. One of the reasons I'm never ready to block that follow-up, I think, is because often when this hits me sidestepping, I'm not holding back. So, for example... Right there, I wouldn't, you know, I, that's exactly how I would get hit very often. I'm like, I'm focusing on sidestepping, it hits me, and I'm not holding back. I, that, that's me. That's really, like, a bad habit that I have. I have to sidestep into, like, holding back more often on reaction when I get hit. But anyway, the low tracks very well. So, solid low poke. How much else to say? Um... Next is down four. Zero on hit. This used to be plus three on hit. And I think safe on block in DR, I think. 
Now it's zero also. Interesting. This pushes out more though, right? Yeah, that... Oh, man. Yeah. Down four. This is your push out. This is the kind of low poke you hit with. And then you hold back. And the moment they whiff something, you kill them. That's what this is. So down four is your, is your push out low poke. It is also negative 11 on block and zero on hit. One frame faster than down three. And um, one more damage also. Cool. All right. Next we got... Oh yeah, let me set the tracking on that. Oh, but this one loses to his left side. I did not know about that. All right. I did not know about that. Good to know. Next is down one plus two, which you can also do from full crouch. Full crouch one plus two. Or down one plus two. Mid mid. I know he could cancel this one. Um, if the second hit whiffs, it's negative 28 on block, negative 17 on hit. So because of that weird range, maybe it's the size that makes this whiff. It's just it's the first hit that's more likely to whiff. Uh, the startup on this is 17 frames. Mid mid. It does crush highs on frame six. Negative 10 on block, plus 3 on hit. Apparently, you can make the second hit with. I'm guessing it's when you're off axis. And then you can input 3 afterwards for a string, which will give you the sway low, which never combos, apparently. And if you hold forward, you cancel out of the first hit. This used to be his wall combo. This used to be his wall combo. But now he has this for more damage, so it's pointless now. Um, and then if you hold back, he goes to sway back. Very weird looking animation. And if you mash two, by inputting it as down one plus two, tilde two, you get that mid launcher. That mid launcher is plus two on block. I did not know that. Wow. How did I not know that? It's very slow. It seems like it could work like a bootleg ass backswing blow from back here. Very slow though, and very shitty range. Yeah, very shitty range. You can see that instantly. It's it's basically like a bootleg ass backswing blow, right? For example. See? See? Mm, not that good. Of the replace down one pursuit with something useful in Tekken 8. Yeah, down one pursuit, like I said, in Tekken 6, I think when they gave it to him, or was it tag 2? I think it was Tekken 6. That used to be his setup for his while standing 3 4 wall combo. But now he, has, he just does back 3 into it. I don't think he could do that before. And it does more damage. But yeah, it's essentially a very bootleg backswing blow to use when spaced. Up close, I don't know about that. Let's see. Yeah, see, it's not that good up close. But when you're spaced out, it's pretty okay-ish. It'll catch people coming in with, like, sloppy strings. <laughs> Let me give you another example. See? But not for the other option, right? Yep, didn't think so. And of course, when people's backs are to the wall, it's a good option too. But it is also very linear, right? 
Yep, looks to be the case. And the low is just kind of goofy and gimmicky, it seems. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so if you block that mid. You have to deal with the low, you can't step it. But it's negative 13. <clears throat> Can you believe that back one used to launch on normal hit in 5.0? And in tag one, and in second four? It was still plus three on block and it launched on normal hit. My friend had the audacity to complain about that shit. I'm like, are you fuck out of here, motherfucker. Get out of here with that shit. Are you kidding me? 20 frames? Fuck off. Fuck off. For a back one input, <laughs> it's not even like a forward forward input. Make back one plus five on block. And he was an eight frame jabber too back then. This motherfucker wanted everything. All right. Uh, next on the list here is down plus three plus four. All right. This hits grounded. We know this. Negative one on hits. Negative 12 on block plus four on counter hit. It does have a unique counter to animation if you want to confirm plus four, I suppose. Um, which might be... No, this is definitely not counter confirmable. That is a counter hit string, though. Down three plus four, two for a lot of damage. Jeez. Um, I didn't know that did that much damage. Um, but despite the unique counter hit animation, you cannot input the two after, after visually confirming. It's too slow. It is negative 12, and you can input down back after the two to cancel and recover crouching. So you can do shit like that. Let's see what's going on with this string. So we know that the low hits grounded, and we know that it picks up in situations like this. Can he delay it? Uh... Not enough to get the, the low wall hit, unfortunately. This used to be a three hit string in DR. Now it's this, but this used to be a three hit string, which would have been useful here because you probably would have been able to get a low wall hit. Oh well. I don't know if this is a decent wall carry over that. Maybe it used to be, but now he has this shit for wall carry. So, I don't know if that makes it, uh, what is it? 44 damage. He sees fucking more damage on normal hit, too, than that. That was 41 damage with counter hit. So, yeah, I don't, you know. It's a goofy move that's just there to fuck with people. Right? Does that second it have counter hit properties? Wow. It does that backflip. All right. Is Aris streaming by the way? I'm stopping soon. Oh, it tracks to his right. Okay. More remake runs. Cool. I'm making pretty good progress here. I don't know if I'm missing stuff along the way. 
Thank you for helping me my, again, Milo. It's probably why it's going so smoothly right now. All right, so that was down three plus four two. I don't know about any other uses for this shit, right? The down three plus four hits grounded, so during certain Oki, I guess, if you notice that people like to wake up kick, maybe you could commit to the second hit. Uh, I, what I would do during Oki is I would do the cancel. I would hit him with the low, hit him with the low during Oki, and then cancel. And then they get up and I'm crouching in front of them. Right? The only problem with this is he doesn't really have any super threatening lows from crouching, does he? So. Damn, I kind of wish he could go right into his core circle back shit out of this. Or you can still just crouch cancel and go with a regular low, I suppose. I've seen it use this option to hit people who stay down after a wall combo, but that's some online shit. Ah, oh, that's true. This is one of those that when people slump and they don't tech, you'd be able to connect both hits, right? Like if I turn off teching. Um, and we go to the wall. I'm back, okay. All right, like that, right? If they don't tech, oh, but it's not guaranteed. They could tech after the low, so they have to tech. Ugh. It's probably hitting me before. Probably, I've probably been hit by that. <laughs> not gonna lie. Alright. It's not, that's not as great as I was, you know, if it was a situation where if the low would hit you, he's guaranteed to get the mid, then that would be alright. But that's not that great. But alright. I mean, that, that duck cancel is pretty cool, but, eh. It is only negative 12, so if you want to commit to it as a counter hit string, it does hit really hard for a counter hit string. So that's not bad. But then again, so does this. But that does not hit ground and then it does less damage. So, And it's mid-high. So you're guaranteed to get launched if they know what to do. While you're never guaranteed to get launched for the other one. Alright, yeah. So that's all the, the down moves. So I'm going to call it there for part one. Next on the list is down back two, then down back three, down back one plus two. Then we got the back moves. Then we got the jumping moves forward forward all right yep 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 all right well hope you guys learned some shit or at least i could uh if i could bring some clarity to some of this stuff too for you guys that's good too i've certainly learned some shit brian's a motherfucker that's for sure so i'm gonna head out of here everybody go watch harris enjoy yourselves 